Welcome back, sparkling humans, to another episode of Ignite Your Spark. I am your host, Kim Duff Selby, bringing you another inspiring, motivating, yes, I am patting myself on the back, podcast. (laughs) (laughs) I am blessed with the guests that come to me, and I know that they are the ones who you need to hear from, whose message will align with you. And I thank you for choosing my podcast to listen to because there are thousands and thousands and thousands of them out there. And if you have tuned in, just know that this is for you, not about me. It's about you and what magic I can bring to you, what inspiration that might help you step outside of your comfort zone to live a more joy-filled, purpose-driven life. Because you are never too old to change a habit, change an attitude, learn to embrace something new, and learn to embrace your authentic self. I welcome today my beautiful, stunning, amazing guest, Jenny. And I'm going to let her introduce you because she says it's so much better than I would. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I've listened to quite a few of your episodes, so I'm very excited. And we have matching everything today. So I'm really excited for those of you who are watching. Um, But I am Jenny, like Kim said, and I focus on the mental health, spirituality, religion, and the intersectionality of it all. I feel like in our day and age, we look at them as such different topics, but we do find synchronicity between all of them. And I'm really interested in finding what pockets could be helpful for people between all of that. Um, And so, yeah, that's my focus. And I have a magazine and I'm a content creator and writer. um, And I use those as vehicles to spread this message. Thank you for that beautiful introduction, which I would not have been able to recreate so lovely. Lovely, clean, lovely, whatever. Uh, (laughs) You have a lot of followers on TikTok and Instagram. And before we dive right into how you got started on this journey, of course, I would like to ask you, how do you ignite your spark? Oh man, I I feel like my spark is definitely staying like a, a student forever. Um, I think that that's something that is so important to me is just to be learning all the time. And so what makes me what makes me feel like I sparkle is the fact that I'm learning all the time and kind of having that mental like expansion as much as I can, um, and letting that be like the driving force for everything that I do. Okay, never has. A podcast guest said that exact thing. And I really love it when people come up with different things like that. And I would agree with that. Learning at any age is so important. When you're a kid, most of the time, you don't really care about learning. You care about being with your friends. You care about being outside. You care about ballet, which I cared about, or dance or music or sports. Mm -hmm. Think about how valuable learning is. And fortunately, we absorb absorb it somehow. (laughs) Uh I can't get enough learning. Same. I'm I'm all for it. And I feel like I'm learning different things every single day. And even with like ballet and sports and things like that, there's so many valuable lessons that we can get about life and like learning about these extracurricular activities. And I kind of wish I gave more respect to the regimented school. And that's something that I crave now. So I find it funny that like, obviously, as you mature, you become more respectful of the people around you, the words around you. So yeah, I'm just trying to trying to inspire younger people to to learn and, and to, you know, be appreciative of that young. It is difficult because it's obvious a life transition, you know, transitions that you go through. And of course, my mother had on a plate a saying that said, too soon old, too late smart. And I never understood it as a kid. But then as an adult, I'm like, yep, that's so true. Mm-hmm. We don't know what we don't know, obviously. And that's okay because that's part of life. It, mm-hmm. it is what it is. Right. But I appreciate learning now. And I know that you do too. And interesting. One of your posts on Instagram that you did recently stuck out to me and it was, was it your mother who asked you what is the greatest gift that you think you can pass on to children? It just came to me. I just wanted to share that because I think that is a really interesting question to reflect upon no matter your age. Mm -hmm. 
you're in the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, or beyond. Yeah. What yeah. do you think about that? So, yeah, to give context, I mean, my neighborhood is like really, really tight knit. Um, and so back in Dallas. And so we um, were all Indian, literally there's a thousand houses, 900 of them are Indian. And they're all, a lot of them are South Indian too, just like myself. And so we have a really tight knit community. And I think that the the women were having a discussion about like, what is the greatest gift that we can give to our children? And um, they were having this discussion and one of my neighbors had responded and my mom passed that information to me. And she was like, so what is the greatest gift that you can give to your children? And I was like, I don't know, financial stability, like a good education, uh, trips, freedom, like money, like an allowance. Like, I don't know what is, what is like, I was reflecting on like the best things that my parents gave me. And she was like, a stable marriage. And I just thought like, wow, like that just, it blew my mind, like a stable marriage. Cause it's not something tangible necessarily, right? Like you can't hold a stable marriage. And that made me question like, what is a stable marriage? You know, I, I got married six months, today's actually six months of me being married, um, which I know seems like a, such a short amount and it is a short amount of time, but it's like, for me, it, I just feel like I've learned so much in the last six months about my partner, like what I find to be a priority in my own life. How can I share that with him? How can he share his priorities with me? And like just that understanding that we both have, I feel like is going to grow as time goes on. And to me, that's like the foundation of a, of a stable marriage from what I can understand so far. Um, and like, I think that that will translate hopefully really well to the children that we hope to have is like, okay, they are absorbing every action that we take. Like, how can I embody the version of me that I would want, want to other people to pass on and want other people to absorb and understand? Um, and how can I be that girl today? And how can my husband and I be that couple today? Um, and it's it's definitely challenging, but it's it's so worth it to have that mindset to be like, I want to pass on love, gratitude, understanding, kindness, support to my child without saying anything. Um, and to me, that's what like a stable marriage is. It's interesting. It really made me think because I wish I had thought about that question prior to getting married and mm -hmm. having children. I knew that I just wanted my children to be themselves, to be their authentic selves. And I wanted to encourage them to follow their passion. And fortunately, I, I think I want, I knew I wanted to do that. I did that without knowing it though. Interestingly enough, my mm -hmm. daughter is a yoga instructor and my son is a tattoo artist. Awesome. And, yeah. They both went to very good schools in California, four-year degrees. And I had no idea or preconceived notions of what they would be or do, but I love that somehow they've been able to realize, yes, they would like more financial stability in their life. However, they have found what makes them happy. Mm -hmm. My father always said to me, I want you to be a happy, well-adjusted adult who gives back to the community. Ah. And I think that what you said, it, it's modeling. You know, what your mother was leading to is whatever you are living in your life, your children are going to pick up on. Mm -hmm. And I know that's true. And this is just a silly example. I'm talking more about myself than I usually do, but my daughter lives in the UK. And every time she comes home, because I'm so happy to see her, she and her partner, and I get, I put a basket of all these treats that they love, you know, all these special chips and crisps and dark chocolate and all sorts of things that they don't get in the UK. And I put it on a table and make it fancy and pretty. We went to visit in May. Mm -hmm. in the leads and she had done the same thing for me oh I mean I don't know why but that little act just you know makes me cry now thinking about it because there's a specific specific tea I love from Paris that you can't get over here but she can get it and she had it all laid out for me and you know what oh. that's such a gift yeah modeling and having them pick it up so right. I, know, I know with all that you know and all that you're doing and all that you're exploring, you will be bringing those gifts to your children. So that's enough about me. We're going to you. Hope so I hope. No, that's so beautiful. And I'm thank you for sharing that because I feel like that's a testament to your character and and how you've passed on that love and kindness. And it seems that she's going to be able to pass that on too to anyone who decides to be in her life. So that's that's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for letting me just say that. Of course, of course.
All right. What started you on your journey in 2020 to be a content creator around mental health, spirituality, and tying them all around? What's that story? Yeah. Um, so I honestly wasn't planning on being a content creator. Like it wasn't like, I'm going to be a content creator and I'm going to do this and I'm going to have, so it, it was an accident. Um, I had a lot of time on my hands, right? 2020 pandemic. We all know the story. Um, I graduated college in 2020. So I graduated from my bedroom, um, had a bunch of time on my hands and, you know, I had a blog for about four or five years prior to that. Um, and I was just writing my own thoughts. It was a diary and I've always been a journaler. I've always had planners. I've always been like that kind of person. Um, and I think that, that for some reason I was writing about um, this really tough relationship I was in in college where it was abusive, kind of hard to be in, you know, it was, it was a struggle. And I, I try not to talk too negatively about the situation, but it was, it was a hard situation for both people in, in the relationship. Um, and we, when I ended up leaving it, I felt like I also lost a huge part of myself and a huge part of my community that I thought I had there in at school. Um, and college was just such a hard time for me um, to, to, to adjust. Um, and so I was writing on my blog about this 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 relationship and I had never done this before but I posted it to my story on Instagram and so many people messaged me and were like I had no idea that you were going through this or I went through this too and and it was just like people who I felt at the time were contributing to that messy time in college had messaged me and so it taught me a lot about empathy and like learning about like okay yes someone can be a certain type of way on the surface but you have no idea what's going on underneath just as how much I want to be understood I gotta like kind of give that grace as well to even if the words aren't the nicest on the surface you just don't know where they're coming from and so it taught me a lot about like extending that hand and just kind of being like that that being a metaphorical physical representation of an olive branch um and so I just was like, you know what, I am going to just talk about this, talk about my relationship, talk about mental health in general, because I was diagnosed with depression when I was like 12 years old. And so that journey of like 10 years of just being really sad and really depressed um, really took a toll when I came to college. But then right after college, I felt like I was transmuting a lot by writing. Um, and so that is what kind of like put me on on the map, if you will. Um, and then I started the magazine about two months later, June 21st, 2020. I was on the phone with my boyfriend, now husband, and I was like, hey, um, I'm going to start a magazine. And he was like, how? And I was like, I don't know. I'm just going to do it. <laughs> and so um, and then I was like, it's going to be called the Indian Standard and it's going to be mental health stories to and from South Asians. And we're going to talk about spirituality and religion and we're going to try to make all of this stuff that is really taboo to talk about, like it's taboo to talk about God. It's taboo to talk about mental health. It's, ta it's taboo to say I'm depressed and I can't get out of bed, right? And so I wanna talk about all those things from the perspective of other people because my mental health story is not everything. Um, and so I can share mine and be like an example of how to be vulnerable online, but then let other people kind of take the take the torch from me um, through the magazine. And that way, viewers, readers can have multiple different perspectives and hopefully a lot more people can be seen that way. Um, and then now we are here three years later um, and I'm still doing the same thing. <laughs> now, all I know about South Asians and Indians, I learned on TV. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My Indian matchmaker in all of the shows on Netflix. Mm -hmm. and it's fascinating. And yes, I have known South Asians, Indians in college, not growing up in Florida. Nope. Mm -hmm. No, any. And you always think, and living in California, of course, we're yeah. very, very smart people. <laughs> the emphasis on education seems to be top notch. Right. Like, did you find that true growing up? Do you think that you, it led to being depressed? Or do you know what that was that caused it? it? And I know it's chemical imbalances sometimes. It's just something. And then did you take medication for it? Do you still, were you able to get off of it? Those kind of questions. Yeah, I never took any medication. I actually really don't know what led me to be so depressed. I think like my parents were, my parents are very, um, 
they, my dad came to the country when he was 18 and then my mom and him had a love marriage. So they got married here. Um, and then, you know, like my parents are very modern in the sense, like in terms of like being Westernized. Um, but then I feel like just my family's lineage in general, we do have an emphasis on, on education, like every other Indian parent, but at the same time have a heavy emphasis on the arts as well. So like I was a singer for, I am still a singer, but I started singing when I was like three, four years old, Indian traditional, um, religious music. And then, um, yeah, I mean, I, I really don't know what contributed to my sadness I think it was really just like I was a very lonely kid and I still struggle with that today where um I feel like I'm the only one in any situation <laughs> like I'm just constantly alone yeah I'll be in a room of like a hundred people and I'll still feel like I'm alone um I'll be with my husband and I'll still feel like I'm alone so it's really like my own self-concept right like me myself feeling like I don't deserve X, Y, and Z. And that's like embedded into my subconscious mind, which has like impacted my actions and things like that, which I feel like is interesting when you look at like what I've like tried to accomplish online is like building a community. Like you have to like question, like why, why are you trying to build a community? Like, do you not have one? And so that's kind of where like, you can see just in my own page, like where some of my my holes are in my own life um and I've done that intentionally just so that people can feel like hey I'm the same way um but yeah to answer like your question I was never really on medication um didn't really do therapy I wasn't allowed to um didn't really have many resources growing up to deal with the depression but I found that religion and spirituality and like kind of the structure of both of those gave me a lot to look forward to. And um, I no longer have those thoughts of of suicide and of the trigger warning. I don't have those negative thoughts anymore of like wanting to not be here. Um, and I credit that entirely to my spiritual journey and my uh, my religious journey. Oh boy, I have a lot of similarities. Are Are you an only child? No, I'm the oldest. I'm, I have a younger sister. I was just curious because I was lonely, but not in a sad way, but I was lonely as a child being an only child. I was also an abusive, in an abusive relationship when I was 16, 17, yeah. 18. And I know what that's like. And you don't know it when you're in it. Mm -hmm. You know, something's wrong, but anyway, I, I can relate to that. And mm -hmm. I, I think that it's very important what you're doing because you are giving other South Asians particularly, but other young humans like yourself, permission to share their stories and to know they are not alone if they are feeling this. Now you say you don't know, here you are creating community. Well, every single one of us, I believe, did something to create community during 2020. Oh, and yeah. most of it was online. So it's no surprise that you created an online community. It's what I did. I started my podcast in 2020. I needed the connection and I figured others did too. Yeah. How do you now believe that you combine spirituality? And this is a question, spirituality and religion and mental health. You said both. And I believe that Yes, there is a marriage between and a crossover spirituality and religion, but I also feel they're very different. And you are brought up in a traditional religious household or spiritual, you know, how do you marry those two? And what exactly does that mean to you? Yeah, I I think when, um, so I, I practice Hinduism. And so within Hinduism, there's a lot of like ingrained spirituality, right? Like everything that we talk about, like our, like yoga, for example, right? Union um, is in every single paragraph of our scripture. Um, and so to me, like spirituality is like a practice, right? Like it's a, it's something that you are trying to understand about your mind, body, soul right now, right? Religion is about connecting to me. This is all obviously from my perspective, but religion to me is about connecting with beyond and you do that through ritualistic ways and i think spirituality is the same thing where you have these ritualistic practices and you're connecting with the beyond so in those ways i find them to be the same because i'm connecting with god in multiple different ways like it can be and i was talking about this in a previous episode but um i i can be like 
pulling tarot cards or doing some of the things that are more common in Western culture, like, uh, and do all of those things and have that same connection with God as I will in those really traditional Hindu ritualistic practices. I'm still thinking the same thing. I'm still thinking about God either way. Even in this moment, I'm thinking about God. And so this in and of itself is yoga right? This is a union. Um, this is a, this is an understanding of energy. This is an understanding of your soul, my soul. And like how, like the fact that we're on the same similar path at this moment, right? Like there's so many things that led us up to this exact moment that I can't help but think of both spirituality and religion. Um, and so, yeah, I think, I think in the Western culture and to put it into English is super hard because I feel like in our, in our traditional ways of looking at things in Indian culture, it's, um, they're all they're all married together all the time. There is no distinction. Um, and so for me, I feel like I was raised in a both extremely religious, orthodox how, lifestyle, like in, a, in that household. But my dad never imposed anything on me. My mom never imposed anything on me. They literally said, you do what you got to do to maintain whatever it is that you want to maintain. Um, and so that made me extremely traditional. <laughs> <laughs> which is funny. <laughs> um, and so <laughs> I feel like that, you know, my mom's really spiritual. My dad's very religious there. I can see that distinction between both of them. Um, but then I also see how that overlaps. And I feel like I'm like this awkward combination of everything. <laughs> I would hardly like say awkward. I would say inspirational combination uh, of both. You had said, I don't know if you said it here or on your blog or in the magazine, but something about how God is, you're not allowed to mention God. And yeah it, it's weird it feels taboo really now who did okay i don't know much about hinduism being honest i know a lot about yoga mm -hmm. not, you can always know more but i did become certified during the pandemic online if you can do that i did it so i understand some of the sanskrit and i understand that but in hinduism you don't talk about god Oh, no, we do. We do. I meant more on like online. When you say the word God, I think sometimes it can feel a little bit like, why are you imposing religion on me? Um, and I think that that's where I've called, like a lot of people have called me a spiritual creator. And I think I don't argue with that at all. Um, but I think it's like, I, online, it feels like I can't talk about God, but recently I've like broken that and I'm like, well, I'm going to do it. <laughs> and so um, that's, that's kind of what I mean there. Okay. It's interesting because we use our minds in such a unique way and all of us are absorbing what we have learned from one person or another or church or spiritual teachings, whatever it is. And that can get a wee bit overwhelming and we have to focus. We have to somehow focus and choose. You know what? I'm just going to say one thing about uh a product actually that I've been using for your mind. This is a perfect opportunity called Magic Mind. And I've been using it for a month or so. And it's like this little beverage. It's um, called Magic Mind. And it's got matcha, nootropics, adaptogens, and it's all vegan and all natural. And it's really, really great for focus. And I don't know if you've ever struggled with focus, Janani, have you? Yeah, I mean, I think we all like in this day and age can get distracted very easily. So I feel like a lot of us are struggling with focus all the time. Yeah, and I know more and more people who are being diagnosed with adult onset, onset ADHD because, and this is my little take on it because we're scrolling, scrolling, yeah. scrolling. And you know, as a content creator, that's what you want people to do. But I know I call myself a micro influencer and content creator. And I find myself getting lost down that rabbit hole so mm -hmm. many times. So when I found this product, Magic Mind, uh, I, you know, took it and I love it. And so I want to tell everybody about it. It really helped me. It helps me because I take it in the morning. It's got natural caffeine, but not like coffee because I don't drink coffee. And it really has helped me stay focused. So you can like get a subscription for it and I'll give you a discount code at the end if you want that. But I'm really, really uh, happy with it. And it has enabled me, when, especially when I do these podcast interviews, to focus on what you are saying and not just think about me. Although I did talk a lot about me, but <laughs> uh, no, I did. But anyway, I just wanted to tell my listeners and tell you about it called Magic Mind. 
Mm-hmm. And I really love it. And you get, if you're just putting Ignite 20 at magicmind.com slash Ignite Your Spark, you can get some off and try it yourself. Mm-hmm. I'll put all that in the show notes. But anyway, it just reminded me as we were talking is that that helps me focus. Back to you and spirituality and religion and mental health. What is your big message that you want all of your followers to know if there is one thing that you could say to them? I think it's very similar to what you are also trying to promote. And it's that you're you're never too you're never too old, you're never too too much or too anything to learn something new. And I think that with everybody kind of struggling in a lot of different ways, like I, this is like a mental health epidemic happening, right? Like there are so many people struggling about a variety of issues and and it's not like the world is the easiest place to live in at the moment. Um, and so, and it's not, not to be like nihilistic or pessimistic. I generally am a pretty optimistic person, but I think like, I don't think it's necessarily going to get any better in terms of like the external circumstances, right? Like things are just kind of hard and they have been for a while. Um, and so just looking at that from like a realistic standpoint, what can you do to be the best version of yourself? And I know that that gets thrown around a lot and I don't want anyone to zone out or roll their eyes, but you know, it really is about you caring enough about you and your family and in order to even care enough about you and your family and your loved ones and your friends and to take care of them you need to have space to do that and creating space to to love yourself and to take care of yourself is a whole part of my journey that took me like two years to even understand that I needed to do that right like we are so focused on either getting money or support, like financially, physically, in the physical reality, doing things to to do whatever we got to do to maintain our lifestyle for today. What about after? Like, what, what kind of legacy can we leave behind? So I want people to take a step back and really question where can they create space to learn more about themselves? Um, and how can they how can they create a safe environment for you, for you, right? Like not for somebody else, but for you so that you can support the people that you want to support. And for me, that is, you know, looking at mental health, spirituality, religion, and finding that marriage between the, and stealing your word, ma- finding that marriage between the three and looking at like, okay, what kind of things can I do to make myself, my husband, my new life a, a happy one um, so that I can support other people really easily. And it doesn't feel like a burden. You know, I I love that messaging. I think you are such an old soul and such a young human. And the (laughs) wisdom that you are going to gain throughout your years by the time you're my age, it's mind-blowing. Because I love the way that you just said that. It's very simple. It's very realistic. And it's very doable. I'm going to throw one other thing in here. Because as I was browsing through your online magazine, part of what came to me is that So many issues in our life come because we don't know about other cultures. We Mm. don't know people. Everybody's human. But I don't know how you grew up. And yes, your magazine is geared towards South Asians for and about. But I found it so interesting reading it because it shone, shone, shined a light on your experience, how you were brought up. So I believe it will give me, I try to not to be judgy, but we're all judgy. What the hell? Um, I, it gives me insight into your culture. And if everybody can learn a little bit more about someone else's culture and give grace to them because of their beliefs, the way they were brought up, then I think that we have a better chance of creating <laughs> peace in the yeah. world. Accepting. So Even though it's for South Asians, I encourage all of my listeners, even if you aren't South Asian or if you are, to go to the Indian Standard. Is it just the IndianStandard.com? Is that how you find it? .co, yes, .co. Um, And I think like that's another thing is that a lot of, so I know that, you know, it's mental health to and from South Asians. I think in one one sense, um, I feel like 
a lot of South Asians don't feel rep represented by today's media. And the representation that we do get is usually like the Indian nerdy boy or the one who's like in a science class or the one who's like, you know, the butt of the joke. And it's it's the one, it's what's really harmful for a lot of young uh, South Asians because they don't feel like they can do anything and create their own path and be passionate about something. Um, and so that's why it's geared towards South Asians so that they can feel like, hey, I actually finally have a place where it's just mine. But in that same lens, I think that we all have, like, I don't know. I don't I don't know if you believe in past lives. Oh my gosh, yes. Okay, so I don't know what ethnicity I was in my past life, right? Like, I don't know what I might be if I have one in my next one, right? I hopefully I'm done in this one. <laughs> but, um, but in my previous lives, like, I have no idea what ethnicity, what gender, what position I had in anybody's life. So I feel like this is an opportunity, like this magazine can be helpful to many, many people because, you know, it talks about duty. It talks about like, what is your duty to you? What is your duty to your family? Especially this previous one. It's really about like, who are you and what do you feel like your job is? And that's applicable to everybody, right? Like that's not just South Asians. While it, it is pulled from my, from the Bhagavad Gita, which is our scripture, um, it's what's what's directly inspiring all of my stuff is is scripture, but it it doesn't just pertain to to us. And I think that that's the beautiful part about Hinduism is that it's you don't have to follow it to follow it. Um, and so, yeah, I feel like this is for everybody. Thank you for saying that because it inspired me to say like, yeah, I mean, literally, I don't know who I was in my past life. I can't just be like I'm Indian and I'm only Indian. Like that's not we don't know. So yeah, I I don't know, but I know. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. I think I was, because I think my mom was my kid, but that's different. <laughs> Didn't have to be in the Indian culture. She could have been your kid in Africa. Right. And interesting. So I grew up in the groovy 60s and 70s where the Bhagavad Gita was like, oh, groovy, peace, love. You know, it was written down on posters. It, it's a big deal. And that was my first experience, you know, with, with that. But past lives interest me and intrigue me because I'm going to say, from the people I've interviewed, the books I've read, just my knowledge growing up that yes, indeed, we were all in different gender, in different stations, different castes as it were in life. Right. And I have learned, or I believe this too, that when you feel a draw or an affinity to a place, maybe you've never really been there, but you just really feel it that you, you have lived there. You have For had a past life there. For sure. All right, but this is not about past lives. Anyway, thank <laughs> you for your wisdom. You're so young and so wise and beautiful and charming and smart. Aww. Where can people find you? You know, yeah. you're on TikTok and Instagram, and I'll write all that down, but just say it anyway. Yeah, so uh, by Jenny everywhere, um, by Jenny.com, and then by Jenny on Instagram and TikTok. And then the Indian Standard, like you mentioned, is my magazine, and it's the Indian Standard.co. And we have two more magazines coming out this year. One of them is about devotion, the other one is about destruction. So we've got duty, devotion, destruction, and kind of taking the path of what I feel like we need to be focusing on. Um, so there's more to come. Actually, we're launching the next one next week. So uh, I, just, I randomly said that today on one of my videos that I was editing and I was like, oh, I guess we can talk about it. <laughs> so it is launching next week. I haven't said that anywhere else. Um, Out until after it launches. So don't yeah. Worry. Well, either way, um, I have a documentary that pairs with each magazine um, and we have full length interviews. Um, it's actually the first year that I've been doing documentaries. So that's kind of why I'm on this tour right now is because it's like I've never taken on this much in my life. Um, and so, yeah, it's thank you for checking it out. And I hope let me know like what criticisms, feedback, any thoughts that you have, because I'm I'm always here to improve. So thank you. I also think that my listeners need to know that this is not your full-time job. Thank no. you. So in banking, I'm thinking you did get that Indian work ethic. Okay. Just going to say. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. It's a full-time, full-time job. I'll say that. <laughs> uh, Jenny, thank you so much for your time today. I have, my heart is exploding right now because you are a special human being. And I feel like all of my listeners are privileged to have heard from you and we all can't wait to see 
what's next for you because I know there's a lot ahead for you. That- Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. This was such a beautiful podcast and I can't wait for me to hear more of you, what, you, what you're working on. And uh, I hope that we continue matching and being in synchronicity. <laughs> because the universe has plans for all of us and there's no accidents no yeah. coincidences only coordinated incidents <laughs> oh i love that what a way to end didn't make that up one of my guests did but anyway love it thank you thank you and to all of you listeners i know you're saying this was the best episode yet weren't you <laughs> <laughs> i hope your sparks are ignited and i hope that you glean something you know, from this beautiful talk with Jenny and go out, shine on, find your light, share your light and give others permission to do the same. Have a beautiful day and thank you for shining.